22 days. 22 days. Live from the Ram Cave, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is Ramview, the April 3rd, 2024 edition, brought to you by Kistler Law Firm. Injured in an auto accident, need help, got questions, call Kistler Law at 661 661- 206-6990. That's Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. And check out KistlerLawFirm.com. That's one word, KistlerLawFirm.com. Kistler Law, they've been fighting for you since 92. And by Temple City Auto Repair. Having some auto issues? Get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp a place where your life can change. 22 days until the NFL draft, 22 days. It's really fascinating to hear the buzz and hear all the stuff in the Rams community uh, or communities uh, because, you know, we're so used to drafting second day or third day and uh, full complement of draft picks makes it really interesting. I know it doubles your workload because I know for, for the last few years, I'm looking at the back of the draft. I'm looking at a little bit of day two and then all of day three to see who they're who they're going to pick up, and now we we got the whole draft to look at, and uh, as well as a deep draft, right? So there's so many people out there that the Rams could grab, move, move off of that gives you the feeling that no matter who they may draft, you're going to be happy with. One of the things that I wasn't going to do a mock draft personally myself today, but when I got up this morning, I got behind my desk, I saw that Stephon Diggs had been traded by the Bills. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but my mind went to Buffalo. Buffalo, obviously, right? They're gonna, they're gonna hire somebody or find somebody. Uh, they signed Curtis Samuel, but they lost Gabe. Uh, is it Gabe Davis? And they've lost, uh, they lost uh, Stephon Diggs. They're gonna need a receiver right now, right? They got the kid uh, Shakir from uh, Boise State, nice little slot guy there. But they're gonna need a receiver. And uh, I thought, would the Bills move up? And of course, other people have jumped on this too. It wasn't just me. Uh, you know, not, and it's not like they lifted from me or anything like that, but, um, I said, okay, what if, what if, uh, you did a deal? So I went to the NFL mock draft database. I went, I went to their mock draft and I got the bills to swap pick number 19 for pick 28. So the Rams moved back in the draft, but in the process thereof, uh, the, the computer, right. It's not necessarily Brandon Bean, uh, the bills GM, but the computer agreed to take my 19th or the Rams 19th for the Bills 28th and the Bills second round pick 60th overall. Now, if the Rams can get that deal done, I'm in that all day to pick up another second round pick and only move back nine spots in a very deep draft. So what the heck, man, why not? So I did it and uh, this is what I came up with and I ended up doing the whole mock draft and I was kind of pleased with it and I'm going to drop it in here in a second. Oh, wow. USA expat. You're in Costa Rica. Good for you. I heard Costa Rica is really nice. Uh, and, uh, and such. So, um, let me, let me uh, check this out here. Uh, there we go. Uh, and, uh, so the first four picks though, actually five, because I got a fifth one, right? Cause I made that deal. Uh, I'm going to show you who we, we can pick up and what's, what's possible in terms of, I can't get the whole draft thing in there. I'm trying to get the whole draft thing in there because I want you guys to look at it. Here, I'll just put the numbers and let you go from there. Maybe this one will do it. All right, bingo. There we go. All right, so I put those guys in there. It doesn't look real good from this spot where I'm looking at it, but that gave the Rams pick number 28, pick number 52, pick number 60, pick number 83, pick number 99. Five picks in the first 100. You maximize those picks in the first 100. And uh, I was able to pick up Byron Murphy out of Texas, Edron Cooper, off-ball linebacker. I don't think we're going to re-sign uh, our Ernest Jones next year. I don't. I don't think they're going to pay him. I think they're going to figure they could swap him out. So that's why a, a linebacker wouldn't surprise me. Roman Wilson, uh, who the Rams have interviewed at number 60. Uh, Manuel Correa, who talked about Jonah Ellis. His weakness is he doesn't have a lot of strength, but he has everything else at number 83. And then Cole Bishop, safety. Those are the first five guys. I picked up a lineman later on. I got Josh Cardi, 
later on. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. And again, something to really think about. Who are the teams that would be willing to trade up? You know, especially how you see it play out. You're seeing right now, you're seeing uh, four quarterbacks in the first round, right? That's a solid. You got May, Daniels, Johnson, and, uh, or I'm sorry, May, Daniels, and Williams. And then you've got also J.J. McCarthy, all four projected in the first round. But then you're seeing Bo Nix slip up. And then in some odd mock drafts here and there, you're seeing Michael Penix. It would be such a a whirlwind for the Rams, a a big win for the Rams, if you get six quarterbacks in the first round. And uh, again, the more people out of the first round that move up, the more talent that moves back. Everyone's seeing it. And again, it's just exciting right now because of where we're at as uh, Rams fans. Uh, with a full complement of picks. So let's just keep working our way through here, guys. I see the questions. I promise I'll get to you. Uh, I heard Costa Rica is real nice. Never been there. Uh, Carson Wentz signs with the Chiefs. Good for Carson Wentz. I'm glad he got a job. And it's a smart move by the Chiefs because you got to figure. Law of averages, right? It caught up with Tom Brady. What was that? The Matt Castle year, 2008. Uh, It just happens. These big guys, they go down for a year. It happens, and you got to figure out what you're going to do. Wentz is really good insurance uh, for Patrick Mahomes. Not saying it's going to happen. Definitely don't want it to happen. That was a good signing by the Chiefs. Uh, I did see the link. I didn't click on it because I just wasn't going to touch it. Uh, Ramswire had a link posted. uh, I think I saw it on Twitter or Twix that said uh, that Rams should bring back Luis Perez, you know, the spring guy, Mr. Spring Football. And I, I respect Ramswire, but man, I say no, right? You know, Lewis Perez is a good story, you know, a testimony to commitment. But did you see him throw the ball this last weekend? Did you see him throw the ball? He might be smart. He might be bright. He might be pliable. But please, right? The Rams have Stafford. The Rams have Jimmy G, Stetson Bennett. I think Dresser, Dresser Wynn is still hanging around. You know, take a flyer on a quarterback in the late sixth or even the seventh. But you don't even – you don't need to be bring Lewis Perez – uh, into camp as a camp arm. You don't. We know what Luis Perez is, right? Nice guy, but he is where he belongs, right? And so I thought that was important. So as of right now, before uh, the Bills bite on my trade, uh, 1952, 83, and 99 are the Rams' four picks in the first 100. And I do have to laugh how a uh, salary cap has become an issue for Brandon Bean and the Bills. Uh, and then on top of that, I think they're a good team. As long as you got Josh Allen, they're a good team and they're, they're, they're contenders, but the AFC is so deep, right? AFC is like damnation alley, right? You just ain't going to get through that, that, that conference unless you do something. And they did do something today. They moved Stefan Diggs, uh, traded from Buffalo to Houston for essentially uh, a second rounder in 2025. And they swapped some late round picks. Um, and, uh, I know it looks like uh, the Bills' cupboard is bare, but I think it's addition by subtraction. Uh, Stephon Diggs is a good receiver these days who often just looks okay. I thought he looked pretty pedestrian in the playoffs, and uh, but he still chirps like he's a number one. And if you're going to chirp like you're a number one, get open like a number one, and you just don't see it anymore. And the part that makes me nervous for the Texans is, you know, they got Nico Collins, they got Tank Dell, they got Dalton Schultz, uh, they got Joe Mixon. They got three picks in the first 100. They got picks at 42, 59, and 86. Um, So in the the deep wide receiver draft, um, you know, they also have John Mitchie out of Alabama. And, of course, uh, Bobby Trees is still there, although he's winding down. But I just don't know about bringing uh, Stephon Diggs into the room, right? I just don't, right? Um, And you kind of root for C.J. Stroud. That was a great story last year. And my hope is that there's someone in Houston – who will protect their young quarterback and get in Diggs' grill when he starts yakking like he's a number one. He is not a number one receiver anymore, but he's a 19-rock cap hit. The Bills are taking on a 31 dead cap, 31-rock dead cap hit, and uh, and they're not saving any money with this move uh, for this season. So what does that tell you how bad they wanted to get rid of uh, Stephon Diggs, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely Brandon B and the Bills GM should think twice before taking any shots at Les Snead and the Rams cap for the Rams cap and draft management, right? Absolutely. Buccaneers signed Randy Gregory. I bring up Randy Gregory because, you know, he was that project that Dallas invested in. He jumped to Denver, didn't work in Denver, got put in the street, went to um, went to Frisco, 
uh, okay, got an opportunity to make it there. He didn't do anything in Frisco, and now he is signed with Tampa Bay. And uh, I just think it's it's uh, interesting. I wonder if Gregory is understanding now how easy it is for teams to move on from him. Denver, Frisco, and now he's in Tampa. You know, he left Dallas and Jerry Jones, who committed to him when he had all of his baggage. And uh, I, you could tell when that incident happened, it kind of hurt Jones because Jones kind of stood by Randy Gregory. And now Randy Gregory is finding out what it's like, right? Everyone's going to move on. Everyone's going to find somebody else. Oh, they come and they go. Oh, they come and they go. They come and they go. Everybody is replaceable. Uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire re-signs with KC. Good depth piece. Uh, but remember, this guy was a first round pick in 2020. You know, talk about coming and going, right? They come and they go and uh, they got him at a dirt cheap price. He knows the system. So good for the Chiefs. OK, since we are in around the NFL and other places, I did see the women's game uh, Monday night. Uh, Angel Reese is a really good ball player. She is. She's a good ball player. But if Caitlin Clark wore a jock strap, Reese couldn't carry it, right? Clark is at Cheryl Miller level, right? I mean, I've seen a lot of women's basketball players. I never saw anyone like Cheryl Miller. Uh, uh, and the closest thing I've seen is uh, is um, Caitlin Clark, right? And the rest of women's basketball, I don't know why everyone's kidding ourselves and we're saying, oh, this is great basketball. It's not great basketball. It's all right. It's just not great. But it doesn't mean I won't watch it because Caitlin Clark's been around for three years and three or four years. And so we know the story. And so that's why LSU is interesting because you know, these players, they come back. Right. Um, and it's the opposite of the men's. Well, somewhat similar is that um, I don't care about the men's game. If there are no stars on the men's side, I've, I've heard people talking about that, but I just want to see a compelling story. Uh, you know, when I first got really deeply into college basketball, I was always a college basketball fan, but then ESPN came along and you could see the big East games. Nothing was better than big Monday. Right. What would you get Big Monday? Did you get Big East, Big Ten, and then Big West, I think it was? Um, you know, when the ESPN blew it all up, you could see all these things. You got enthralled with these stories. You know, Ralph Sampson ran his whole career there at Virginia. Ralph Sampson, Craig Robinson, Jeff Lamp, Rick Carlisle, Othell Wilson, Ricky Stokes, Tim Mullen. You like these guys, right? And could they get over the top? Could they get to a final? I became a Villanova guy. Uh, I like Dwayne McLean, right? You had you had uh, Stuart Granger, John Pannone. Remember John Pannone? Uh, Gary McLean, Easy Ed Pickney, Harold Jensen, Harold Presley, who I interviewed. Good dude. Uh, this was a great story when Villanova beat Georgetown because you knew the progression, right? And you knew the progression for Georgetown. Um, you know, when I think of, a, you know, that you still know the starting lineups from teams 30, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Uh, if I say Drexler, Mishu, Young, Franklin, Hakeem, Geddes, Anders, you're going to say Faisalama Jamma. If I say Scooter, Rodney, Lancaster, Milt, Charles, Jeff, you know these players played for Denny Crum, the McRae brothers, Lancaster Gordon, Milt, Milt Wagner, Charles Jones, Jeff Hall. We're 40 years down the pipeline here, and I can still remember them, right? And it's not because I got an exceptional memory. It's not bad, but it's because you knew the story. You knew it was, it was compelling, and you didn't care if they weren't superstars. You just wanted to see the good story. Imagine where the country would be on DJ Burns, the, the NC State guy, if he spent the previous three years with the Wolfpack, right? This guy's Mr. Charming. This guy would be getting national commercials now if uh, he hadn't bounced from Tennessee to Winthrop to uh, NC State. Uh, college basketball is just too fluid. Right. And so you want the story. And uh, I don't need the great play. I just want to see good basketball and give get me someone to root for because the names change. You know, I wasn't exactly heartbroken today when uh, I heard uh, Bronny James uh, is entering the transfer portal. He's going to take his five points a game someplace else out of USC. So hasta luego. All right. Hey, I'm Joe Tarosi, and I was a sports writer for 21 years. We're going to get to these questions here, and I actually had a couple sent to me ahead of time. I'll get to those. But, yeah, I was a sports writer for 21 years, mostly football. Um, I was one of the founding members at the Mid um, with Tim and Dwayne. Those guys are still there. They're in the room at Mid Valley Sports covering the Chargers. They're all excited about Jim Harbaugh, uh, and I get to talk Ram football, doing uh, thanks to our sponsors at Kistler Law. And um, – I get to talk around football and I get to write books. And that's how I support myself in my day job. I pastor a small church in Burbank called Burbank Faith Nazarene. And it's right here on YouTube at Burbank Faith Virtual and uh, BurbankFaithVirtual.com, Burbank Faith Virtual across social media. And, uh, 
And so, yeah, so I don't hide behind a Patreon account. I don't have a paywall or anything. So supporting our sponsors and buying my books uh, really help us uh, keep the show going. This is my book, Sin Virus. Think Walking Dead meets Christianity. Uh, a lot of action in this book. I got I got a couple of good reviews. Doesn't do as well as the football books do, but it was the one at the top of my desk right now. So check this one out. Uh, I think it's a good read, and it's not as long as you think. I I, uh, I have short paragraphs. There you go. You check that out. Okay, let's get to some commercial uh, questions during this break time. Got a full slate there. Thanks, guys. USA Expat, happy uh, happy Costa Rica day, man. Nice. All right. Tim Burns, catching this from the Cancer Center, which is hard with all these machines. All right. Good. Thank you, Tim Burns, USA Expat. I'm finding the draft to be very interesting with all the quarterbacks. An unexpectedly great player should fall to 19. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I saw a couple that had Jared Verse dropping to 19, the Florida State edge. You know, we've seen Fuaga, we've seen uh, Fontenot, we've seen these offensive linemen drop. Um, I'm not real thrilled about drafting a Bo Nix at 19, uh, but we've seen a lot of these guys drop. And so, yeah, I think there's going to be some really interesting things happening. So that's cool. Uh, USA Expat, my uh, Costa Rican wife inadvertently listens to your pods. So you're creating another fan here. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm having trouble with Spotify right now. I got locked out of my account, something crazy, trying to work that thing out. But tell your wife, she's a person of great taste, all right? Uh, thank you so much. Tim Burns, non-football. Caitlin Clark is something to enjoy. We should all realize she is someone people will talk about uh, for the rest of time. Pretty amazing. What I like about her, and, and she said it, and I noticed it when she plays, the moment's never too big for her, right? Everyone's looking at her. Spotlight is on her. Everyone wants to stop her. And she's still pulling up and shooting from 25. Love it. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, I don't know if it transfers to the WNBA. I don't know. And I don't care about the WNBA. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be a shame. You know, they're going to need someone that's as magnetic as as Caitlin Clark uh, next year in college basketball. And I don't know if everyone else, if there is anyone else like that. You know, maybe... Maybe Cheryl Miller's got a daughter out there. Uh, Tim Burns, funny. Uh, Chop, as in Chop Robinson, is showing uh, in mock drafts again at 19. I didn't see him at 19. I did see him uh, in the mid-20s in the first round. I got suspicions about um, Chop. It's just beast, great, great physics, all that physical stuff. I just worry about Chop Robinson's production. That's all. That's, that's my only concern. Uh, Manuel Correa. Uh, yes, Manuel Korea. You got Jonah Ellis, beast, right? Yeah, I knew about him. I looked deeper in him. The only knock on him is that he's uh, he's not heavy enough, he's not strong enough. He's 246, he needs to probably just bulk up a little bit. But uh, but you know, Young has the physique to hold the edge, uh, and uh, maybe that that creates enough there where we're just looking for a zip, right? We're just looking for a guy, right, that can hold the edge, Hoyt can hold the edge. We just want that guy that can get to the quarterback and make life miserable for Brock Purdy, uh, Gino, uh, Gino Smith, and uh, and Kyler Murray, right? So, yeah, I do. I, I do. I do have a feeling for Jonah Ellis. Manuel Correa, check out Brennan Jackson Edge at Washington State. I have. I like him, and uh, I wouldn't be upset if the Rams took him. Tim Burns, your thoughts? Rams do their players right. Example, Donald's retirement bonus. It seems like Ernest Jones is not getting treated great. Did they promise him the moon later? You know what? I, I don't know about Ernest Jones. You know, I think, you know, I understand holding back, you know, a little bit uh, because of just finances for this year. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I, I like Ernest Jones. And uh, it's just, you know, our whole time. Look at the McSneed era. They, they really didn't commit long term to Alec Ogletree. I, I like Ernest Jones a little bit better. Uh, you know, they, you know, Laurinaitis was not a draft pick by Sneed, uh, but Laurinaitis was gone after the 2015 season. He only played like eight years, I think, with the Rams. Uh, and he was pretty much done anyway at that point. But, you know, there really hasn't been a linebacker the Rams have invested in. Not really. They just keep kind of moving them in and out. Ernest Jones is the best of the lot. But this defense that the, if they're still in that Fangio scheme does not put a high priority on that off ball linebacker. You need them, but you know, you could pick them up in other places. Hence reaching for Edger and Cooper, the Texas A&M guy or Peyton Wilson or some of these other guys that are out there 
uh, on the second day. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with uh, with him. That's, that's a bummer. I do like Ernest Jones. Steve Ramirez, I still say get an edge first unless both Leitu or, or Chop are gone. You know what? I, I hear you. I hear you on it. Where do you feel on Latu or Chop, Steve? I prefer Latu over Chop. And I know I'm going to upset Mr. Burns there, and I don't want to upset Mr. Burns when he's at the doctor's there. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not real big on Chop. And Latu, it cracks me up. Everyone has got all these injury concerns for Michael Penix, but literally uh, Laitu Latu was forced to retire in college before he came back. Th there's no medical issues with him, right? And he's going to get banged on every play. Just something to think about. Bill, uh, I keep waiting for the trade before the draft. Do you think one is coming? I do not know. I do not know. Uh, you know, I, I, I think there could be one. But also, I think you hold your cards close to your vest and everyone maybe gets a little antsy, a little panicky on draft day. And, uh, and you know, you know, you know, someone out there is going to be eating their pancakes and want to move off number one. Right. Uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, so I would I would say unless there's something really certain uh, I can see or it blows you away, you wait until draft day uh, and. You, know, you see who's slipping back and who needs to move up, and then you fleece them, right? You fleece them. Uh, Manuel Correa, Nancy Myers, UCLA. Remember Cheryl Miller? Hey, Nancy, uh, you know, uh, Myers was good, uh, but uh, what's her name? Remember Nancy Lieberman uh, at Old Dominion? Uh, but Cheryl Miller, man, her and the McGee twins. I did watch those games back in 83. Watch Col uh, Kim Mulkey play for Louisiana Tech. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Cheryl Miller to me was pretty special. Hey, Caitlin Clark though is pretty, pretty good too. Not a little bit more than pretty good. Bill, I like, uh, light to light, light to. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, the McSneed era has built up enough credibility that if they say, this is what we're doing, we're all going to dance, right? You know, this, that's the music we're going to dance to, right? Cause we trust them. Uh, Steve Ramirez, Latu over chop. That too has all the moves and is great against the run too. Okay, that's where you're dancing. All right, guys, cool. Thanks for clicking on and asking those questions. You can throw some more up there in a minute. Yeah, one thing I did want to get out again today, I'm having trouble with Spotify. I got locked out of the account. I was adjusting something and it takes forever. There's no live people to talk to over there. I'm just talking to chat boxes and I can't seem to get in, but we'll get that worked out real, real soon. A couple of questions were thrown to me. And they're not necessarily football related, but I, I guess I'll answer them since I do promote my books here to help, you know, pay the bills a little bit. Uh, an individual, I'll just call him Snow, asks, what advice to someone would you give to someone who wants to write? Um, and uh, I'm not an expert. All right. When I when I make a billion dollars, then I'll be telling you how to do it. The first thing I would tell somebody when they want to write and we dealt with this with sports writers is don't be an artist. Don't be an artist. Don't 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 buy into someone telling you you're an artist. Now you may be. Fitzgerald's an artist, right? Uh, Steinbeck, okay, great. Flannery O'Connor, yeah, okay. I'm not arguing that there, but don't think of yourself as an artist. If you're going to write, you got to have a blue collar mindset. Uh, you know, fortunately, I've been blessed to sit behind a desk or go to meetings. I, I haven't been a blue collar worker where your body wears out. My brother's a truck driver. His legs and shoulders are all beaten up now. And he's only a few years older than me. Uh, but the blue collar guy, the blue collar work ethic is you go in there and grind. When I was at the mid, our best grinder was a guy named Tim Peterson. He works there still uh, from a removed position. Steve Ramirez is a guy that's a grinder. It's like a yeah, guy could plug that guy into anywhere and he would uh, get his work done. Not to embarrass you, Steve, but if you're going to write books and everything, you've got to be a self-starter and you've got to be blue collar and you can't wait for inspiration. You got to sit down and start to write and inspiration will find you. Okay, there we go. As uh, Jimmy Miller dust into the lesson. There we go. Uh, THX1138 says, you say no heroes, but you mention Colin Coward a lot. Uh, and uh, I do. The reason I mentioned Coward a lot because he's the one I listen to on the radio when I'm taking my daughter to school. Because Dan Patrick doesn't do it for me. Everyone else talks everything else except sports. Colin Coward, love him or like him, he talks sports. Uh, and you can disagree with him, but you still got to acknowledge his talent. He's the best sports on-air talent I've heard uh, in terms of just where we're at right now. I like some other guys, but in terms of talent, he's 
pretty good. And, uh, you know, he's the Limbaugh of sports. And people are going to say, oh, Limbaugh was terrible. You don't have to like Rush Limbaugh, the late Rush Limbaugh, but you cannot argue that uh, Rush Limbaugh wasn't talented. That guy never had any guests on his show. That guy would talk for three hours and, and take calls. Um, Limbaugh's talent was amazing. And so is Colin Coward's. But you don't have to agree with everything they said. I, I disagreed with something Colin Coward said today. He was talking about how you know he was pushing back against people who said that LeBron James isn't a killer. And he says, that's nonsense. And I say, Colin Coward, that's nonsense. It's a really uninformed statement to make because um, he's not a killer. I've seen him defer too many times down the stretch, either not wanting to take the shot or not wanting to go to the foul line. Uh, just speaking in Laker history, Kareem, Magic West, Nixon, uh, Worthy, Kobe, Goodrich, even Van Exel, those guys were killers. LeBron's not a killer. He's the best player in the NBA presently. Well, maybe Luke, not Luca, but maybe Joker is. But um, LeBron is a very good player back in the 90s. Very good. He'd be knocked on his butt a lot more, and he wouldn't be able to do the things he's doing now. He played in a soft era in the NBA, and he took advantage of it, and he's very, very good. He's not even close to a goat for me. Sorry. That's just where I'm at. Now, you could say, wow, Joe, you're really talented, but that sucks as a statement. And I'll go, I guess I have to take it. All right. Let's keep pressing on here. Uh, answered all the questions, guys. I love the questions. Keep throwing them at us. Um, something you need to think about, especially as a uh, I think Bill brought it up and I talked about it early about, hey, the Bills are in the market now that they could be wanting to move up to number 19. A couple other teams I was thinking about is Tampa Bay and even Baltimore. You know, Baltimore lost three starters along its offensive line. And uh, and then maybe also maybe KC because things are a bit uncertain with Rasheed Rice, right? Uh, maybe they might want to move up and be aggressive about a receiver instead of seeing if one falls to them. So just something to think about. Um, one of the things I did was you look at the Rams offensive lines and, uh, they all come, the Rams don't really reach too much. You know, they'll reach for an edge. They'll reach here. They don't reach too often for, uh, offensive linemen that are not in power five conferences. Um, in 2017, all five of the starters were from power five conferences. We're talking big 12, big 10, you know what I'm saying there? Uh, big 12, big 10, ACC, uh, PAC 12, all that stuff there, SEC. Uh, 2018, it was the same offensive line, all five. 2019, four of the five. 2024, the five. 2021, four of the five. And then in uh, in uh, 2022, you know, that was kind of a crazy year. Most starts, three of the five were from Power Five conferences. And then in 2023, four of the five were from a Power Five conference. The one that wasn't was Kevin Dotson. The Rams have drafted 17 offensive linemen in the Sneed era, and uh, 13 of them have come from Power Five conferences. Uh, the Rams developed Coleman Shelton, Iowa. The Rams developed Alaric Jackson, Iowa. The Rams have drafted Logan Bruss, Rob Havenstein, David Edwards, Wisconsin, right? They really do like those bigs. Uh, Michigan State, Brian Allen, Michigan State, A.J. Akuri. We haven't seen that come to fruition yet, but we did win a Super Bowl. I say we, the Royal we. Uh, we did win a Super Bowl with um, Brian Allen at center. And I'd love the idea of Brian Allen hasn't signed anywhere. Could Brian Allen come back as a backup center at a budget deal for the Rams? Wouldn't that be righteous to get him at a cutthroat price? He hasn't signed anywhere. So that would be fun to say. I also bring this up because this is BYU's first year in the Big 12. And, uh, and uh, you know, everyone's hot for Kingsley uh, – Suwama uh, Taya, and I get it, big beast of a guy, and he might be great, uh, but you know, prior to the, his whole college career, most of it, he was out of the out of a Power Five conference, and I don't know, just seeing where the Rams lean. I'm not going to be upset if Kingsley Suwama Taya is drafted by the Rams, but just giving you an idea of where the Rams go, the Rams go to the big conferences for their big guys. All right, Lance Zerline put out a mock draft, his mock draft 3.0. Uh, some changes here at the top, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Bears, Taxkins had the Giants trading with New England to come up and take Drake May, had the Vikings trading with uh, the Cardinals to come up and take J.J. McCarthy. This means Marvin Harrison falls to Justin Herbert, Jim Harbaugh, and the Colts at number five. Malik Neighbors goes to the Patriots at number six. I don't know who's going to throw him the ball. Uh, Titans take Joe Alt at number seven. That is like... <laughs> 
that is as locked in as anything, um, as certain as Joe, as, as a Mike Tyson knocking out uh, that guy he's going to fight on Netflix in a few months. Uh, Jared Verse going to the Falcons at eight. Romo Dunze going to the Bears at nine. Jet, Jets taking Brock Powers at 10. Dallas Turner, Alabama going to the Cardinals at 11. Quinion Mitchell going to the Broncos at 12. Uh, J.C. Latham going to the Raiders at 13. Olam Fashino going to the Saints at 14. Byron Murphy, this is the highest I've seen Byron Murphy go, the Texas guy, going to the Colts at number 15. That's pretty high. Brian Thomas, talk about a guy that's starting to catch some fire. The LSU receiver, the other guy opposite of, uh, of Malik Neighbors, uh, Brian Thomas has gone late first round to all the way to number 16 to the Cardinals because of the trades they made. They made a trade here with the Seahawks, according to Lance Zerline. Um, Jaguar staying on that cornerback uh, binge there. Terry and Arnold. Uh, Troy Fontenot, the Washington guy, going to the Bengals at 18. And, drum roll please, for the Rams, Liatu Latu, UCLA, at number 19. We've done 25 mock drafts. Seven of them show Latu going to the Rams at 19. Mr. Burns, Chop Robinson checks in at number 21. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Kool-Aid McKinstry going to the Cardinals at 27. Adonai Mitchell going to the Bills, receiver at 28. Cooper DeGene going to the Lions at number 29. Jordan Morgan, Arizona, going to Ravens at uh, number 30. Uh, and Lad McConkey going to the Chiefs at number 32. Just thought that was uh, important for you guys to see there. What else we got here? Um, yeah, Rams uh, schedule comes out uh, second week in May. So you'll get through the draft, right? And then the NFL is going to gobble up someplace around Mother's Day weekend. And we're all going to be hooked in to find out, you know, when do the Rams uh, go to some of these places? You know, when when do they go, uh, you know, to uh, Chicago? When do they go to uh, New England? When do they go to, I was going to say Shea, when do they go to the Jets? Uh, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get all that in about another month. And so draft first, only 22 days away. All right, let's look at this here. It was a stone groove, my man. It was a stone groove, but we're not done yet, Chief. So on this date, April 3rd in 2018, this goes to Bill, okay? Uh, the Rams making a deal, right? Uh, the Rams uh, made a deal for uh, Brandon Cooks. Uh, they gave up their number one pick. Uh, they sent it to the Patriots. Uh, along with a sixth rounder for Brandon Cooks and a fourth rounder and that was fourth round 136 overall. Uh, the Rams then traded that fourth round 136 uh, pick overall in 2018 to Carolina for a fifth and a sixth round pick in the draft on draft day. Uh, and uh, and who did they pick up? They picked up Micah Kaiser and another guy. The, the other the other pick. They picked up Micah Kaiser with the fifth rounder, number 147. The sixth round pick, they traded it to the Redskins. And uh, they traded it to the Redskins uh, for uh, a sixth round pick and a seventh round pick. The sixth round pick became a defensive end named Trayvon Young, who got injured, got waived halfway through his rookie year, never did anything. The seventh round pick turned out to be Trayvon Howard. What's Traven Howard known for? Not a whole lot. Had a chance to start for a while, injured his knee. But what did Traven Howard do? Anyone know what Traven Howard do? Right guy, right place, right time. Picked off Jimmy G's desperate throw to send the Rams to the Super Bowl. He uh, he closed what uh, Aaron Donald start, started in that NFC Championship game going back to January or what, February? Was it January? January of 2022. So Traven Howard deserves to be remembered. Seventh round pick. We got some clicks out of that guy. Good for him. Born on this day in 1964, Shane Conlon, Penn State linebacker, drafted ninth overall by the Bills in 1987. He played for Buffalo for six years, played in three Super Bowls with them, went to three Pro Bowls. Uh, he played three seasons for the Rams, start, played in 40 games, started 37. But it was really a bummer signing. By the time the Rams signed uh, Shane Conlon, you know, he was just a guy. And you know, he was done after one year in St. Louis at the age of 31, and he just moved on. And uh, I remember people were – we were seeing people come and go, and people were saying, oh, no, the Rams, they, they signed Shane Conlon. And, and most Ram fans thought, Shane Conlon, you know, that's just window dressing, you know. And that's when everyone knew they were kind of cleaning house before moving on to uh, St. Louis. Tomorrow's April 4th, so we won't be on the air. Uh, the Rams hired Dick Vermeil, 1969 – 
uh, on this on April 4th, they hired Dick Vermeil for the first time. They also signed a, a quarterback, an African-American quarterback named Johnny Walton, who never really played for the Rams, but he was with the club for a couple of years and uh, played in preseason games. Uh, the coach who signed him, the person who signed him, uh, George Allen, George Allen. And you've heard some loose loose corners of the, of the dark internet space trying to say George Allen was racist and stuff. And uh, yeah, just dismiss him. Uh, on April 4th, 1989, the Rams signed the son of Lou Brock. They signed Lou Brock Jr., uh, who was a second-round pick of the Chargers in 87. He had a nice career at USC. People thought he was going to play in the NFL. He had some illness that kind of derailed his career. He only played in four games for three teams and never with the Rams. Uh, I did want to bring this one up real quick. Um that on uh, April 4th, uh, well, let's acknowledge in 2020, Tom Dempsey passed away. Uh, and then uh, I want to acknowledge this real quick. In the year 2000, on April 4th, the Rams traded uh, traded a sixth round pick to the Broncos for Derek Lavelle. Lavelle had had a 10-year career in the NFL at that point um, with, uh, I think he played with the 49ers and I think with the Broncos too, won Super Bowls with the Broncos. But he was just he was kind of a, a backup running back. It started a little bit, uh, but he never plays a down for the Rams. Never plays a down for the Rams. And uh, and here's the interesting thing here is the the Broncos used that sixth pick 19 uh, in 2000, 189 overall. They draft a former Marine named Mike Anderson. He's 27 when he comes into the NFL. And in his rookie year, he runs for 1,487 yards and 15 touchdowns. Then he goes to the bench. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's playing behind other other running backs there uh, in the post Clinton Portis era, and uh, or maybe it was during Clinton Portis's time when in Denver. And uh, and then in 2005, he comes off the bench, and he rushes for 1,014 yards and 12 touchdowns. And I just bring this up is because we're heading to the draft, right? And it's so easy to just kind of dismiss. Look what we saw there with Traven Young, Traven Howard. Uh, look what you see here. It happened with Mike Anderson. Now the Rams didn't need Mike Anderson in 2000. They still had Marshall Falk in his prime. And ultimately they got Steven Jackson. That's not the point. The point is we're so quick sometimes to dismiss, to dismiss those uh, late round trades where you move back from five to six and you pick up a seventh on the way. And there's always value there. Always. If, if Ben Skoranek never plays another down for the Rams, that was a huge hit. When the Rams drafted Ben Skoranek, seventh round, I think 250 or 249 overall back in 2021, he contributed to the Rams and so and has and still is as of now. So you never dismiss those trades and you never just walk away from the draft and say, uh, you know what, I don't care. It's the third day. Well, third day is important. Rams have got a lot of clicks uh, in uh, on third day draft picks and uh, uh, the NFL shows that you find a lot there. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Um, uh, Manuel Correa. I'm thinking we end up with Braylon Trice. Rams met with him in private. Absolutely. I've seen Braylon Trice uh, drop Manuel. I've seen him go from like the 33rd pick or 34th pick overall in some mock drafts. And now I see him trending a little further back in the second round. Uh, USA expat. I'm not big on Latu at 19, but if Sneed picks him, he's my instant favorite. <laughs> absolutely that's exactly it right uh and uh and stuff that is funny that is true yeah I, I think they've earned the benefit of the doubt right i think they've earned the benefit of the doubt uh and manual korea rush was the i'm sorry was the bomb okay yeah rush was the bomb absolutely he was the bomb uh a couple things here uh housekeeping here uh, I got asked, you know, why am I passionate about uh, Logan Bruss? I'm not passionate about Logan Bruss. Tore up his knee really bad in 2022 and uh, takes a while to recover. Uh, there's a reason the Rams drafted him. And he played at Wisconsin, right? David Edwards played at Wisconsin. Rams got nice clicks out of David Edwards. They've gotten 10 years of clicks out of Rob Havenstein. So I'm not ready to give up on Logan Bruss. Not yet. Maybe the Rams will, and I'll just say, oh, yeah, dump that bum, you know, but I'm not ready to give up on Logan Bruss. And so I wanted to answer that question. A quick reminder here, uh, we've set up a nice little rhythm here at 5 p.m. It's working for me right now. So we're going to stay at the 5 p.m. slot, except this Friday. 
This Friday, I'm on the road. I'm going north. Uh, you heard one of our sponsors is Granite Ridge Christian Camp. I'm on the board there, and I have a meeting um, up north uh, on that day. So I intend to be back that night. And so what I'm probably going to do, and you guys do not have to tune in live. I don't expect anybody to. Probably about 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, I'm going to do Ram View at 6 a.m. this Saturday morning, just so I can get the third show in. Uh, I like to hit my marks. I know people say, just take it off. Don't worry. Don't come back on Monday. But it just bugs, right? It just bugs. It's just something we do, right? It's the blue collar in us, right? It's the work ethic that we do uh, because um, that's that's what separates you. There's a lot of people with talent, but not everyone works hard. And we want to be seen as people that are working hard. And plus, I owe it to our sponsors, right? So we'll be on at 6 a.m. Saturday morning. That's my aim, 6 a.m. Saturday morning with whatever has happened in sports. We will not be live on Friday at 5. Okay, cool. Um, anybody else there have a question or so? We're at the 40-minute mark. It's the perfect place. Uh, please be sure to hit subscribe uh, and like and, and stuff. You know, when I get off the air, it'll show like I had 40 or 50 clicks during this time. And then when I when I hit publish uh, or save for the thing to be seen, it says I have zero viewers, right? I don't know how the analytics works. I just know that we are getting watched. Uh, book sales show that. And you guys have supported us, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles out there. There's guys that have a lot of graphics. And eventually, we're going to get there. Eventually, I'd like a wider set. Eventually, I'd like something with a clean, more antiseptic look. So, uh, you know, right now, it's the Ram Cave, and the Ram Cave is cool. But you guys click on. I just hope to think that we provide the best content we can. And a lot of that content comes from questions. Uh, I put my email right there. Uh, in the more info here. So you can see at any time, if you want to send me an email with your mock draft, I am going to be more than happy to talk about it. Okay. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, all right. Any other questions, guys? All right. And be patient with me on, uh, on Spotify right now. We're just having a hard time uh, getting that done, but we will get it done. Okay, guys. God bless. Take care. Oh, Evan Hotz, I hadn't seen you. All right, I'm going to answer your question. Do you think the, the Rams will draft an offensive tackle to compete for the left tackle spot? If so, where in the draft do you think they will select him? I think for 2024, my belief is the Rams are committed to um, Alaric Jackson. Uh, that, that's my belief. Uh, they're committed to Alaric Jackson right now. Uh, and the expectation is for him to get better after a full season at left tackle. Uh, however, however, if you got a Fuaga, if you got a Fashino, if you got a Fontano, you got a guy like that falling to you, um, then I can see the Rams going, Hey, we're here. That guy's there. We got to take him." And then it goes back to best player available. You know, if it was, uh, was, it, is it Jason Paul? Is that the guy that we're talking about? What's that guy? John Paul. Uh, we were just talking about him last week. If he's there at 80, uh, you know, if you draft him, I wouldn't expect a guy drafted in the third round to oh, upset uh, or take uh, a Larry Jackson spot. That would be kind of scary. But uh, but other than that, if the guy is there, depending where the Rams are at, um, I see them leaning defense. I see them leaning edge or or DT even when they move back. Uh, but you know, if you re-sign Brian Allen for a cutthroat price, right? If you re-sign Brian Allen for a cutthroat price, you've got you got Joe Noteboom who could play everywhere else along the line. And then you keep hearing stuff. And that's not Logan Bruss, but I keep, you see little different chit chats here and there saying the Rams are high on uh, McClendon, uh, their draft pick last year. And, uh, and so, um, you know, there's some depth there then maybe, right. Maybe there's, there's depth in that line. And, and so the Rams can put off the big move uh, until uh, next year. Uh, you know, Jackson's a free agent next year. As if the Rams, depending on how the Rams come out of this draft, uh, that looks like right now they'll have another first round pick next year. Um, you know, there, there's people you can go after, and there's people you can go after late and 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 then take time to develop. Uh, you know, some of those Michigan Michigan guys. Uh, you know, you wouldn't hesitate uh, to take some of those Michigan guys and let them develop and let them marinate. Uh, and so that's how I see it. Um, Neil Gonzalez, do you like Newton? That's uh, Jerzon Newton, Illinois at 19. You know, 
the treasurer at my church graduated from the University of Illinois, and she is telling me about her mock drafts, and she's watching to see if Jerzon's going to go to the Rams. And uh, uh, if the Rams don't move anything, if the Rams stay right there and he's there, Byron Murphy's gone, you know, you wonder, like, what's the market? If the Rams don't draft him at 19, will anyone else draft him at 19? And generally, you see Jerzon back at 27, 28, 29, 30. You see him back there. You know, if the Rams can't make a deal, you know what? I've seen Newton play. I wouldn't have a problem with Newton. I wouldn't have a problem. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like what uh, I think. Uh, who said that? Was that was that USA expat that if uh, if Sneed picks him at 19, I'm gonna dance, right? It's like he put the coin in the machine, and we're gonna dance to that music. But I do like Newton. But if I can get Newton at 28 or 29 and pick up an extra draft pick, you know, again, I, I sound like I'm just harping over and over again. I love the idea of picking up a, a fifth or a sixth pick in the first 100. It's a deep, deep draft. Uh, Rams had three picks in the first 100 last year and they all hit, right? Uh, you know, Byron Young, uh, 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 Byron Young, Kobe Turner, Steve Avila, they all hit and none of them were in the first round, right? So, so, um, so there's just talent there. That first 100 is special, and uh, you guys can get we can get stuff there. And so that's why I'm not against trading back. All right, <laughs> people keep clicking on. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a viewer uh, hog. If people want to click on and talk, if you guys have questions, I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, let me know if you got a question. I'll hang on for a few more minutes and take some questions. Uh, I'm thrilled. Lately, we've had viewers from Canada, Denmark. I got someone down in Costa Rica watching us. I feel so, so, so metro, you know, I see so, feel so cosmopolitan and everything like that. Um, one of the names I didn't mention is, uh, is okay, I'll mention this. This is for tomorrow, for April 4th, since we're not on the air. Uh, on April 4th, 2003, the Rams signed tight end Cam Cleland. Does anyone remember Cam Cleland? He came out of the University of Washington. He was drafted second round by the Saints, and he caught like 54 passes his rookie year. And it looked like this guy's going to be a stud, but he got hurt in, a, in an accident with one of his uh, teammates. They threw a sock full of coins at him, hit him in the eye, and permanently impaired his vision, and he was never the same. Uh, the Rams picked him up after a stop in New England, and he spent three seasons with the Rams, and he only caught 22 passes after such a promising beginning. The Rams signed him on, on April 4th, 2003. On April 4th, 2012, the Rams signed Torrey Holt to a one-day contract, and he retired as a Ram officially. Got to get Torrey Holt in the Hall of Fame, right? Uh, Torrey Holt, Stephen Jackson, and Don Klosterman, folks. Don Klosterman. Don Klosterman needs to be in the Hall of Fame. On April 4th, 2022, the Rams signed Bobby Wagner to five years, 50 rocks. That lets you know how contracts work in the NFL. Rams signed Bobby Wagner to five years, 50 rocks. He played one season and was put in the street. So everything with these salaries and these uh, contracts, they're all pliable and flexible. Just something to think about. Okay, uh, another thing here came up. Also, April 4th, 1933, uh, Lyndon Crow was born. He was a strong safety for the Rams in the 60s. He played at USC. He was drafted in 1955 by the Chicago Cardinals, 14th overall. That's the second round. Had Pro Bowl seasons in two Pro Bowl seasons in Chicago and a third with the Giants in 59. And he came to the Rams in January of 61 in a three team deal involving the Bears and the Giants. Uh, the Rams got Crow, and eventually, as a player to be named later, they got Zeke Bratkowski, backup quarterback, Georgia. Spent like 17 years in the league. He was always backing up Bart Starr, uh, and he also had some time with the Bears. Uh, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> the Rams gave up uh, Billy Wade, right? The, the heir apparent after Van Brocklin and Billy Wade went to the, or Waddy, however you want to call him. Uh, well, if he's Billy Wade, he's Billy Wade. If he's going to be called Waddy, he's Bill Waddy, not Billy Waddy. Uh, and he went and won a title with the Bears in the 60s. But Crow started for the Rams for four years, picked off six passes, took one back for a touchdown. He wore number 41, uh, but had a really nice 10-year career in the NFL. And again, the Rams weren't good, and then you get forgotten. But he was in a backfield in a secondary there with Eddie Meter, who was his running mate for four years, right? Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, Lyndon Crow passed away in uh, 2018 uh, at the age of 85. All right. I think I've come to the end of all my stuff. And yeah, we got it. All right. There we go. Okay, guys. Now for sure I'm going to go because we're coming up to the 50-minute mark. Respect your time. Hey, thank you for clicking on. God bless. Take care. Uh, please. Hit the like and subscribe button. Leave comments after, and I'll do my best to answer them. And send me your uh, mocks. Okay, guys. God bless. See you Saturday morning, 6 a.m. PST. Okay. Bye-bye.